We'll talk about it, though, after we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, up as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters. You're going to see it right on the left-hand side, the opening call. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199, or 22%. And you get it for one full year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593, or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? Basil has approximately... 12 different archives out there. So once you sign up, you get all the archives. You understand how the Chapman Wave moves through these markets each and every trading day. Check it out right in the front page of TFNN. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good. Very interesting because this week's got a lot of challenges up and down. And we'll have the next one coming up tomorrow with the Fed. Yes. And we've got advanced micro devices coming out this afternoon. So uh, I'll show you what I'm looking at here. Cool. So from from the the Dow high of eighth of the first of August at thirty five thousand six seventy nine, using our one of our techniques is using on balance volume. We went short that day. We remain short. We've had trading uh, trading positions uh, three times long, three times short, just small positions trying to ra uh, use the Chapman Wave methodology. What I was looking for was, and what I said during my show on, on Thursday, going into Friday, that if Friday was very weak and Sunday night the futures were very weak, and we came in with the, all the news uh, channels talking about how bad the market is, and the market dropped very sharply on Monday. That was yesterday. Then we could get that V-shaped turnaround, and that would be very important. I didn't see how it could happen because um, there are some areas that look to me like they need a little more time before we make any kind of a major low. So I said we could have a low, but not the low. So instead, what happened, the futures were pretty not, not bad on, on Sunday night. And then early in uh, Monday morning, the futures were up. And we had that big move to the upside. So this follow through is kind of kind of to be expected. So what, what I did for subscribers is we added one of the Magnificent Seven that we've liked for a long time. We've been waiting to put money aside that we could start to look at some of these positions that have held and show some kind of tenacity. And they'll be able to hold. They will still keep a fairly short stop on the position. So we've started to look at long positions in what already have been core market participants. Now, here's the other thing. The, you, the volatility index, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, the volatility, VIX, I just, <laughs> I've been typing in so many numbers today, I forgot the symbol. So the volatility index, I had said, should scream into the high 20s, the low 30s, and that would give us the signal. And look, the volatility went to 23.08 uh, about eight sessions ago, and it's down again. So that's not really working the way it usually does. Uh, even here at 18, um, the market actually should be much weaker. So the, all those I mentioned in my show earlier today, and the Tiger Nations are, that all those icons, all those things that used to work with dollar up, uh, yields coming down helped the market. Oil, um, if the dollar was up, then oil would pull back. None of those are really working the way they used to. Even when gold was uh, up and the dollar down, uh, that was the normal thing. But now you've got something very different. So all those historical uh, icons that I used to look at have different meanings. So it, within that context, one of the things that has not changed for me is that the SMHs, the semiconductors, even now they're up a dollar. They are really struggling. I mean, look at this chart. Look at that cup formation, 159 back in November 2021, plunges down to 83.49. Uh, that was uh, that was in I think it was March of uh, 2022. Rallies up to 161.17, all time high, and then comes back down. So you've got this beautiful symmetry between the cup formation and the plumb line in the middle that I use as a, a price time match goes to new, just barely makes a new recovery high, then pulls back. So 
uh, using the same technique that I used for the Dow on the uh, 2nd of August, we went short the semiconductors via the SMH. Uh, 161.17 was the all-time high. Uh, we're short from just over 159. But look at this symmetry. Look at this the way the, the price moved down. You see this daily chart, and then it yes. moves up. And then that exact measurement of the blue line to the downside, the same angle. I love this. This uses the Chab wave inside wedge and the arch formation to get to the same symmetry from the inside track repellent zone to the support line. And it holds right at this uh, little dash, this little, uh, sorry, narrow inside track uh, propellant zone. And then it runs up and it goes to the resistance. In the, the green line matches almost to the penny. And now the blue line is coming down and we've almost matched to the penny today's low. So these, the symmetry of this says to me that yes, you might get a little bit of a bounce in the SMHs, but that's telling me that this market isn't yet quite ready to have the big move to the upside. So I consider that important. We are still holding that UEC I had mentioned to you quite a few weeks ago, Uranium Energy Corporation. Um, and we, we ended about 364. It's trading now at 592. It's about, I talked about this inside track repellent zone. See, it's just bumping up against it here. So um, the things that have been working seem to continue working. And, and what is starting to struggle, um, well, what has been struggling continues. So we're going to be watching, for instance, the TLT is trying desperately to, the, the bonds are desperately trying to form a, some kind of a base to balance. Haven't done it yet. Basil, dollar... what, what, is, what is the overall feeling that you get out of Metro Boston as to you know, what's happening in the economy? So in the economy, the people that I speak to, um, people just say, wow, whenever we talk about prices of anything, people just shake their head and they say, prices are out of sight. And the big thing is, especially people in my age group who you know, have kids who have moved out, and now they're free to do anything they want, um, the, the, the parents, and what are you going to sell your lovely house? And move to a two bedroom or something that you're going to pay. But the they same can get price for? they can get five percent, which they've never been getting five percent. Well, that's the other thing. Not this is only the first time that they've started talking about the five percent. So that is important. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Interesting. Yeah, so, it, it, it's so it's so intriguing because the, there's no doubt the high prices for all of us is a big deal. And then when you look at the growth factor in the economy, it's five percent. I say, okay, where is it? I don't, you know, it's, it's really intriguing, right? In general, it's, yeah, yeah, it's the juggling trick, yeah. Listen, folks, get over to our website at TFNN. Check out the opening call. Baz, have a great one. It's safe one. We look forward to show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. You Thank too. you. Bye bye. Driving the volatility in 